Hello and welcome back to Uplift Equine Dressage Test Review. Today we're going to review the USDF first level tests where we will see the lengthening of the trot, lengthening of the canter, leg yield at the, leg yield at the trot, counter canter loop, and the 15 meter circle. So the lengthening of the trot comes out of the stretching trot. So not the working trot, the stretching trot. You bring the horse up into more impulsive collection. So they are more forward, but you're bringing the horse's head up and their, their forehand up and then asking them to power forward into that lengthening trot. This is a prerequisite to the medium trot and the medium canter. And of course, that will eventually turn into the extended trot and extended canter, but this is the first step into going that direction. Then a leg yield at the trot, it's a lateral movement where you keep the horse's body, you know, more or less straight, and then you move to the side. To the side. Um, that's more of in a half pass manner, so it's more of a diagonal versus a full pass where it's just completely one direction sideways. Um, that gets the horse to start yielding to the leg. Now in classical dressage that doesn't isn't really used. It's used on the ground just to kind of get the horse used to sideways movement like completely. So it's to get it's to teach the horse to differentiate between shin pressure and heel pressure. So shin pressure equals lateral movement, heel pressure means forward movement. Um, that's the idea anyway. With the leg yield, the classical method uses it like once. And then we move right on to the shoulder. <laughs> so I don't really like doing the leg yield, but it's, it's one of those main things in the first level dressage test. The counter canter loop you take your horse on a slight loop into the arena and then back in, back onto the, the regular circle. That will start to get the horse to balance more straight up and down and less to the side. So if you see a horse unbalanced at the canter, you will see them pitched inside. So they're leaning the inside. Generally, the rider is also leaning into the inside, which doesn't help. But the counter canter helps the horse even itself out and carry itself straight up and down. The 15 meter circle is of course five meters less than the 20 meter circle so you need more balance in order to stay on that circle going that direction. So it's a little more advanced of course you know you're getting more advanced as the first level versus training level um, but that's those are the changes I mean of course they you have the things that you worked on for training in intro but it's, it's a gradual build until you get the Grand Prix and then of course you're magnificent. So let's get into the tests. So you've got a 2019 USCF first level test one. And so directly from the halt, I can see this horse is not balanced properly because the horse had trouble stopping and it wasn't a square halt. The horse is also behind the vertical Unfortunately, you'll see this more and more in dressage as the tests increase and get more advanced. The horse is nicely forward, but you have inconsistent rein contact. So this horse is tolerating this rain contact, this lack of consistent contact real well. But you can tell he's a little annoyed. As you get into first level, that's kind of one of the first things that you really want to work on is that consistent rain contact. There's, I think, is a lengthening, which is nice. I would like to see the horse's head forward from the vertical a little bit. 
to show that the horse is lengthening its body with the lengthening of the trot. So when you lengthen the trot or the canter, you're not only allowing the horse's legs to move farther out from their body, but you're also allowing the horse's body to move longer. So that's why they call it lengthening. The horse becomes longer. Although this is a nice free walk, I would tell this rider to stop spurring their horse <laughs> during the free walk. Just, just move your, move your seat, rock your seat forward and back. Do not spur this horse on every stride. So with this rider, it's really subtle, but you can see that they're using their spurs quite a bit. She's trying to lengthen the canter without allowing him to do so with the rein. So that's why he was nodding his head forward and back. He's trying to get momentum without having a whole lot of carriage. That's a nicer lengthening, but like I said before, I would like to have that horse's nose a little farther in front of the vertical instead of behind. That's a nice active forward movement. If I were instructing this rider, I'd want to take away their spurs and just get them to ride forward with their seat and see how that goes. a better halt but it's still behind the vertical and I, I don't like that. So here's the 2023 USDF first level test 2. I like this pair. I mean they have their their positives but they also have their little problems. So that's a nice halt. So you want the horse to halt on the spot that indicates whether or not they are completely balanced. Now I like that lengthening. She's allowing the horse to lengthen their body a little bit. Now here we have the leg yield. See there is a sideways movement without really curving their body. Another lengthening. Now there's white hands. So 
So when the horse is allowed to, they should stretch into the contact automatically instead of having you try to cue them into it by seesawing on the mouth. that 15 meter circle. So I really don't have much to say about these guys. And then they're more or less doing a pretty good job. I'd like to see him a little more in forward from the vertical a little bit so that when he comes in, he comes in on the vertical instead of behind it. I'm glad she's allowing her horse to stretch forward out a little bit more than most in that stretching circle. There's a nice halt. All right, so we have 2023 first level test three. a pretty good halt. So far so good. Nicely, oh uh, well, she's behind the vertical. So I say she's nicely on the vertical until I saw that, but here's your leg yield. Here's a stretching. So she's not letting the reins out enough. So the horse is still behind the vertical. Thankfully, the horse is stretching forward down. I don't think her hands are wide, which is nice to know. It's nice to see, no wide hands. And the horse didn't change tempo, which is good. Now you saw the horse's ears pinned back a little bit when she transitioned. So there's a little bit of discomfort and imbalance when she's transitioning from the trot to the canter. And this is the counter canter loop. So she didn't do a bad loop. It's pretty good. I mean, once the horse has an established canter, he seems okay.
And then of course he lost a little bit of that and transitioned down to a trot. So her lengthening isn't all that great. So basically this horse has disconnected power or currently is too weak to really perform this very well. So her trot's decent, but she needs more upward downward transitions at the canter. nice transition. So her lateral work isn't bad, so she's just having trouble getting power into that canter and keeping power in the canter. So the horse probably drops his forehand a little bit when she transitions, so he's a little weak at that, at carrying her into the canter transition. And since she doesn't since she can't really lengthen that well, the horse isn't pushing very much. So there's some sort of disconnect in his back. That's a nicer transition, so she probably has an easier time working him on this direct going this direction. Well, okay, that wasn't the length, that was the counter, counter loop. So he seems a bit heavy on the forehand, so she needs to work on trot canter, walk canter transitions. And then, of course, the stretching canter, which is not something that is taught much in competitive dressage, unfortunately. Because in competitive dressage, they teach what's required in the test. So if the stretching canter is not required in the test, they're not going to practice it. Even though in the classical world, it is a prerequisite to lengthening the canter. I mean, in my opinion, you've got a free walk, which is stretching. You've got a stretchy trot, which is stretching. Why not do the same thing, the same courtesy in the canter? All right, so here is test three. Pretty good halt. too bad. I do like to see them a little forward of the vertical, especially at this level. As you can see, he has a bit more power. He has a little bit more looseness since he's not being pulled back 
at least at this moment. Who knows, it might change in the test. She's trying to get him to stretch by getting those hands wide and seesawing his mouth, which, you know, since they kind of practice it, he seems to be kind of doing it. But obviously she can't just ask him to do it and then get out of it. It's more like, well, let's do this seesawing thing and hope that he stretches his head down. So she, the judge saw this too. She rushed him into the, tr the canter. Which means he doesn't necessarily have too much impulsion, which is that hind leg push. And you see him kind of lean in. He's not completely balanced at the canter, and so that's making him uncomfortable enough for him to swish his tail around a lot. Those wide hands. Yep, and the judge sees it too. Could be more stretchy down. Because remember, the free walk is a forward down stretch in the walk. So stretchy trot, stretchy canter, stretchy walk. They just call it a free walk. Not a bad transition. Alright, so he's popping his head up a little bit. She's asking him for a leg yield. So when the judge says the bend varies, they're just not getting a consistent bend, and that circle may have turned into more of an oval. So we're at 15 meter circle is probably more like a 17 or 18 meter circle. Notice he's getting a little faster, but he's not really lengthening his stride. Those are the tests. So as you can see, we've got the first level tests down. You've got your lengthening trot, lengthening canter, leg yield at the trot, counter canter loop, and your 15 meter circle. So there's some good, there's some bad, there's some ugly. Um, not as ugly as the last video. <laughs> it was a little bit of ugly in that, but, um, but yeah, remember, you've got your schooling shows, you've got the the feedback that your instructor gives you and then your test. 
So remember, don't wait for the judge to give you very disconnected, fe dis disconnected feedback in that you have to wait for the test to come out and then you see the commentary on the test. So just go to a schooling show or have your own little schooling show with your instructor and say, hey, let's run through this test, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, and if your instructor can't tell you what you're doing wrong, get another instructor. So, But um, I hope you enjoyed that. Please return again when we have another video out. And I uh, hope you have a great day. Thanks.